Welcome to our five on five. I'm pleased to be joined today by Senator Ron Wyden in studio practicing good social distancing. Senator, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. So we have a lot to cover today. I want to start with uh, FEMA. Is the federal government doing enough to help Oregonians impacted by last month's fires? And if not, what more can be done? If this was a basketball game, I would say that the federal government is basically in the first quarter. And the fact is we've got a lot of heavy lifting to do. We've got the uh, FEMA administrator uh, uh, coming this weekend uh, to have meetings. We've asked uh, that he be here, be on the ground. And the big issues that I'm going to focus on are particularly housing. We've got so many forest fire evacuees who just don't have uh, adequate uh, uh, shelter. And then also debris removal. Debris removal is a safety issue. It's a community well-being issue. It's an environmental issue. Those will be two issues that I'll be zeroing in on with the FEMA administrator this weekend. That's right. FEMA Administrator Pete Gaynor in town. I know you, you and the, the rest of our federal delegation, uh, Senator Merkley and Congressman Walden, will be showing him the damage from the Almeida fire. Why is it so important he see that firsthand? You just can't do the job right sitting behind your desk in Washington, D.C. It's why I've had 970 in-person town hall meetings. You've got to be able to look Oregonians uh, in the eye and what the administrator is going to see as I've uh, pointed out, out to them, is there are places in Southern Oregon where I've had uh, community uh, meetings and now basically it's just all ash. And so it's really important that he come and uh, the delegation pushed hard for it and I'm glad he's gonna be on the ground. I wanna ask you now about the president, uh, his announcement last night that he and the first lady have COVID came as a shock to many. Now he's headed today to Walter Reed Medical Center with a mild fever and fatigue. What's your reaction to all this? Well, Nan Nancy and I already sent uh, our wishes for uh, a fast recovery, but I think there's a real lesson here, and that is the virus is still with us. And when the coronavirus hit 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, literally uh, where the president and the first lady and so many you know, congregate from all over, over the world, it sends a message that we've got a lot more to do in terms of practicing uh, uh, social distancing and wearing masks and all of the things that constitute uh, a good public health and good science. All right, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to our Five on Five, joined with Senator Ron Wyden here in studio practicing good social distancing. Uh, Senator, do you think the American people would be better served if the Commission on Presidential Debates were to cut the mic of a candidate when they don't follow the debate's rules? Whether it's that or some other approach that ensures that we can actually have a thoughtful discussion of the important issues, I don't think we want to see a repeat of what we've just been, been, been through. We've got such big challenges in, in front of us. For example, I'm particularly concerned that uh, Mitch McConnell is not willing to, to work in a bipartisan way to get a good coronavirus uh, uh, package passed. I can tell you a lot of Oregonians, uh, October 1 really is a time when they gotta make rent, they gotta buy groceries, and I'm hearing from businesses that they're saying a lot of their clients can't afford the payments that they normally make. So the stock uh, uh, financial markets um, really sent a message today that when Mitch McConnell said, oh, we're so far apart, they were basically saying, you better get going. And as the author of the bill that expanded uh, unemployment insurance to $600 per week, covered a lot of extra people, I want to do that in a bipartisan way, and I want to do it quickly. Do you think a middle ground can be reached for some sort of package to help Americans? We, we have made it uh, uh, clear on the big issues that we do want to find common ground. For example, as the author, as I say, of the expanded unemployment, I've said, I heard the Republicans say, look, when uh, people are really hurting, they got to have enough money to make rent, buy groceries, but when the unemployment rate uh, uh, goes down, then the benefits should reflect that. So my most recent legislation said, let's tie unemployment uh, benefits to economic conditions on the ground. When things are really tough in a lot of communities, it's got to reflect uh, that people are getting the money to make rent and buy groceries, but when unemployment goes down, uh, there ought to be changes. 
You've accused Republicans of breaking their own rule pertaining to election year appointments. If they confirm Judge Amy Comey Barrett to the U.S. Supreme Court, they say they have the votes. Is this only a matter of time? Well, let's reflect on just what's happened in, uh, in the last couple of days. You've got, got an infected uh, uh, senator on the Judiciary Committee, uh, Mike, Mike Lee, who apparently was at all kinds of meetings and, and rallies and, uh, and, and the like. And I think from a public health uh, standpoint, not from a politics standpoint, this ought to be slowed down a little bit to make, make sure that everybody's going to be safe. Senator, thanks for taking the time and joining us. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back.